What's up? And welcome back to Opposites Attract Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, your girl, and I'm sitting next to... Miguel Ramirez. What's up, everybody? How was your day? How was your week? How was your life? Going. Great. What's up, babe? What's up, what's up, what's up? We're back again. Back again. Sing that song. I know you know the words. Here we are. Back again. What is that song? Shut up. <laughs> all I know is tag team back there you again. Go. That's all you know? Check in your reckon. Let's begin. Party on party people. Let me hear some noise. He's in the house. Jump, jump for joy. It's a party over here. A party, a party over, over there. there. That's like I know one that of, part. That, that's one of the first songs that uh, when I first started DJing. Yeah. That, I, I, I know about the time because that was the song that was out. Really? When I first started DJing. That's funny. You know, it, oh, I it, bet you you guys didn't know that. It was. Huh? It, it's funny because we were talking uh, last week uh-huh. to Joe Coy, and I was talking about the Knights of Columbus and taking all the DJ equipment. And when right. we were talking, I mentioned something about like me being nine or ten. Yeah. But when you think about it, like I, I look at Joey being nine. I think you said thirteen. No, no, no. Well, I started at Knights of Columbus oh. when I was nine. Around thirteen was when we were handing out flyers and doing all that stuff. Are you kidding me? Yeah, but. Knights of Columbus was way before because that's when we first started. And uh, I had to have been about 10 years old or something like that. And yeah. I look at Joey being that young. And yeah. I w- I'm talking about we had like $10,000 worth of DJ equipment, you yeah. know, mixers and amplifiers and all that shit. And I, I figured out how to put that all like hook it all up. That was my job. Yeah. What's so crazy is the other day I don't remember who brought it up? <sighs> I don't remember either. Anyways, when you were um, a DJ, right? So uh-huh. we would get together and you would be our DJ for our parties. Yeah. Lisa, it may have been my goddaughter. Was it? Because you DJed at her party yeah. and your brother was yeah. there as yeah. well, right? Yep. We weren't my even married Alan. then. We weren't married then. I re- The picture upstairs is from that party. Yeah. So... After that gig, Miguel actually started writing music and he was, he started not, not country music, rapping. No, 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 no. I should have wore the, the spaghetti, the, sh- the shirt, <laughs> my, <laughs> with my, your face you, you're going to wear your, your groupie shirt. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't even know how that started, but you started writing music and then we started like doing things like you were actually performing at a club Stoudemire yeah Stoudemire's the down, the NBA player yeah, at his club yeah at his club downtown yeah and then in Tucson was it tu- no it was like, Sarah Vista. It was Sierra Vista and that that was freaking crazy because at that time I think I was working two jobs I think yet yeah, I was I was working two jobs. I know it for a fact because I remember. So I was working at at that time. I was like, I want to make some music. And and you know what? Like, I never really. I don't know when it came to the music thing. I don't know if I ever really saw myself like really doing that. Yeah. I just enjoyed kind of making music. It was like a hobby. It It was 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 a fun hobby. hobby. But I don't don't know if I if I I ever really like thought to myself, like, I'm going to really push this thing. Yeah. And be a rapper. Isn't you know what I mean? That's fucking crazy. It, it is crazy <laughs> because we even did First Friday. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, I performed. I was the there to support and yeah, yeah. I was his groupie. We but, would wear. He they who was it? No, we made spaghetti strap shirts. Yeah. With it was you, Adam. It was our group. Yeah. And, and who Jay. was and Jay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. We did some crazy shit. We've done some shit. <laughs> yeah. Right? It, and that seems like it was so long ago. It, it was so it was a like, long time ago. I don't know. Yeah, when she brought it up, I was I was like, oh my God. But, like I forgot about that. Yeah. What you I know? was gonna say, the one in Sierra Vista, I know I was working two jobs because I was working at this helicopter company and they were laying people off. Mm-hmm. Right. And we had just had Audrey. And I remember getting a call from another, from a contract house and they were like, Hey, if you want to like, are you looking for work? And I'm like, well, I might be like any minute because they're laying everybody off right now, you know? So, um, I talked to them and I talked to my manager where I was working and I told them, I was like, look, this is what I want to do. Like, I just had a kid. You guys, you know, what's up. I know Mm -hmm. what's up. You guys are letting people go. Can I work at this other place and here at the same time? And he's like, 
go for it. Well, I was working 80 hours a week, day shift at this one helicopter company, night shift at another helicopter company. And then uh, at the same time, this whole thing with the music was happening. So uh, the Stoudemire thing, it was like a, it was like a contest. So we had to write and record songs. And the thing is that at that time, I didn't have equipment to record. So we were recording in Sierra Vista, which is like yes. three hours away. Mm -hmm. So not only was I back here, but I would have to drive three hours to record. Did I go one time by myself, like just because I had to go and finish a song or something? I don't I think I think we I might have or maybe me and you we I went know. I don't know. we went and we were at Jay's house and you guys were we were recording right yes um yeah. but yeah so we we did all that and then when we performed in Sierra Vista we opened for well I didn't, I didn't see anybody because like I said I was working yeah. and I had to drive we had to drive back so I didn't even get to stay to hang out you remember that like mm -hmm. we did the show got off stage and left Man. And we had, they had opened, or well, we opened for a, is it do or die? Do or die. And, I don't remember. And Nocturnal or somebody else. It was that, that, that song, Do You Want to Ride? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the backseat of my caddy. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I did, but I never saw them, never heard the song because we performed and I left. Yeah. Or we left. Yeah. Yeah. It's just when you think back of everything that we've gone through and see where we are today, like we, we hustled like yeah. we hustled. Speaking and of hustling, it's I, like 10 o'clock at night <laughs> on a freaking Thursday. I got work tomorrow. You got work tomorrow. I remember that the day like during that time, like money was tight, right? Yeah. Like we always had what we needed, but money was tight. Yeah. And I don't know if it was that year or the year before whether it was for my birthday or what, but you bought me. Was that when I bought you scissors? <laughs> because I think you were doing the rapping. We may have been doing. Um, Gangsta rapper selling the, tutus, the tutus and baby hats. Right. I mean, <laughs> for reals. Yeah. You know, yeah, we've done a lot of shit. Right. And but when we you were talking the other day and you were like, yeah, but when we did it, we did it. Yeah. You know, like we always did our best. Yeah, you know what? That that's something that I wanted to talk about, um, because, I mean, a, a perfect example of just getting shit done. It for you guys out there that watched the last episode. Obviously, that was a big episode for us. Um, but if you were to look at the setup that we had, which we'll put out, we're gonna put out <laughs> a picture of that setup um, for the Joe Coy episode. Yes, you should see the ghetto rig bullshit setup that we had. I took a picture. Yeah. I mean, we had we had a TV, we had copy paper boxes with like Two. one. So you know the the the, the little uh, the folding tables that you use when you sit on a couch and eat dinner. Mm -hmm. We had one of those with a monitor on top that was sitting on top of two boxes of copy paper to lift it up so that you couldn't see it in the reflection of the logo. Right, and then. We, we, had, we, it. we had wires going all over the freaking place. We had wires coming from upstairs from the router downstairs yep. to the computer to make sure that the internet. Wi -Fi. Yeah. But the thing is that a lot of times people want to do something and it's like, well, I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. They wanted to start like a YouTube channel and it's like, well, I don't know what kind of camera or the microphone or this. I'm like, hey, you have a camera in your pocket right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. This is episode 109. Every video that we have shot has been on our cell phone. Yeah. And, and you know what? And that, that is almost like a point of pride, you know, because if you look at it and you look at what we've done, you'd be like, wow, that actually looks pretty good. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's shot on a freaking cell phone and it's edited in the Microsoft Photos app. <laughs> it, it, and I'm not talking yeah. about fancy ass video editing programs or nope. any of that shit. Yeah. I looked it up and I figured out that you can edit videos like very simply. Not anything really professional, but good enough mm -hmm. with the Microsoft Photos app. Yeah. We always worked with what we had. But my focus was always just the quality. Not what I have, but I want to be able to do the best I can with what I have. Right. I want to put out the absolute best quality with what we have. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes time to upgrade things, then maybe if, if I have to get something cheap, then I'll get like the best of the cheap stuff. Right. And then I'll replace that with the best of the best. 
Right. You know, but you don't have to wait. Like so many people or or like starting a business or, or whatever. It's like, well, this isn't right. You know, the time to have a baby, you know, you look at the economy. Yeah. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. Yep. Just, yes. just go, yeah. just go. You yes. have, you have enough. Just get busy. There's yep. a way to do it. Yep. 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 Excuses, excuses. Right. Yep. Um, so last gonna... last week, um, we went on vacation. Yeah, and that was it. Was so crazy. It was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So we went to Flagstaff last weekend, and here in Arizona, for those of you that that aren't here, this state is. I mean, I, I love this state just because of the way that I mean, where we live right now, it's nice. Like it was warm today. <laughs> what it was like 75, almost 80, something like that. And it's, it's the perfect. end of February. Mm -hmm. But if you drive two hours north to Flagstaff, like you'll see snow, you'll be in the snow. You can go sledding. You can mm -hmm. do all that. I mean, you head two or three hours south and you're in Mexico on the beach. Right. You know, you drive four hours north and you can be in Vegas, mm -hmm. you know, so there's so much to do here. But one thing is that we, we, we talked about, you know, we, we've been working so hard and doing so many different things. And we're like, you know what? Let's just go away for the weekend, take the kids and just kind of spend some time together. And uh, and we did that. And we started looking up things to do in Flagstaff. And we've been there a few times, but we never knew that they had like these ancient ruins that are north, like right outside of Flagstaff. What was the name of the volcano, Suncrest? It, it was the uh, Sunrise. Sunrise. Yeah, the Sunrise Crest, I think. Sunrise Crater Volcano. Sunrise Crater. And it was a, a volcano that was active, I think, about a, a thousand years ago. It's freaking crazy. Like, we brought back some... Oh, you can grab them. Some lava rocks. Um, but, like, I mean, of course, everybody's seen lava rocks and all that. But when you go to this place... This like, ha cool. yeah. Like, half of the, uh, of the, vol uh, of the hill is like dead mm -hmm. and black just mm -hmm. from where the lava flowed down. Like you, we walked on the lava path. It was crazy. Like I had no idea yes. that that was out there. And Joey, appreciate yeah, I mean, both the kids, they were, you guys can see it on YouTube and Facebook. Yeah. They, right. they just, they enjoyed themselves. They enjoyed the entire weekend was absolutely amazing. It's <laughs> so crazy as we go from that. Right. And it looks like desert. Yeah. Right. Where we were. Yeah. Beautiful. Just desert. And then on across, you could see like snow or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It, like yeah. it was. There, there was like no snow. Right. It, it's weird because you have like, so first we went to the sunset crater volcano mm -hmm. and that you, you kind of see like the pine trees and it looks green. Yes. Um, it's like green and then like dirt and all that. But there's not really much snow. There's a little bit of snow, but not much. Yeah. But in the distance, you can see mountains just covered. Cover. Covered. Yes. Not only Beautiful, covered. Beautiful. Breathtaking. Not only covered in snow, but you can see that it's windy up there. And it's it's like pushing the snow off the mountain. Right. And it looks so cool. But then right after Sunset Crater Volcano, we drove a little bit farther. And I'm talking about like 15 minutes. And now it looks like you're in a completely different place. Now that, <laughs> right. that looks completely different yeah. than where Sunset Crater Volcano and that's was at. Arizona. And the snow. It's mm -hmm. it, that was like the red rock desert. Right. And in the middle of this red rock desert, they have like these ancient ruins of like it's got houses where people used to live like seven hundred years ago or something like that. I don't know. I think uh I think or maybe I think they were there before the volcano and the volcano drove them out. So they were there a long time ago, but it was, it was pretty crazy, but you never hear anybody talking about it. No. For those of you out here in Arizona. I'm a native. Yeah. Never. <laughs> and I had no idea. Well, you had been there to oh, the, to the sunset crater. Yes. But I didn't, re I don't remember. I yeah. didn't remember. I didn't remember. But it's crazy that you guys. I was so, so young. It's crazy. That you guys went to sunset crater and not to the, to the ruins. Right. Because it's like right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you guys that are, that are out here or whenever you come out here, uh, outside of Flagstaff, if you want to check it out, look up Wupatki and the Wukoki Ruins. That's W-U-P-A-T-K-I and Wukoki is W-U-K-O-K-I. And yeah, I mean, it's like the, the indigenous people that used to live here. They built up, it's like a little city that they have with, what was it, like 10, 10 rooms? They had like a ball court where they would play games. 
there's also a, a blowhole that was there. Yes. I got a blowhole, but this was a different kind of blowhole. Uh, it's just, it's a hole in the ground. And I guess it's like a crack in the earth's crust. And it blows air from inside the earth. Yeah. And depending on the pressure outside or inside or whatever, like if the pressure is high outside, then it sucks air in or blows it out or whatever. <laughs> I'm not a scientist. But uh, yeah. we have pictures of all of this. Yeah, we'll be. And I we'll, have not posted any we'll be of them it. Well, because I just been. It's just been crazy. It's been crazy. We got we got yeah. some things that obviously you guys know what's <laughs> up. We got to take advantage of the opportunities that we have right now. So we'll be posting all that stuff here soon. So after we were done with all that, we actually took the kids sledding. Yeah, and that was a whole lot of fun. That was fun. And so after we went sledding, we took the kids back to the hotel. And they went swimming. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that day like, was crazy. It was beautiful. I, I loved it. It was perfect. We went to the... We, we needed to spend time together. Yeah, we did. It was it, way overdue. Yeah. And, and now we're just... Back at it balls again. Balls to the wall, back at back it. Back at it again. And even more so. You know what? Um, And I have to say something to you. Like, I want to apologize to you. Ah, uh, now I'm going to get all emotional. Not <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> well, no, like seriously, because I feel that. <sighs> okay, here it goes. Okay. Should I put the sad music on? No, don't do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So we've been recording this podcast for two years. Yeah. Right? Almost. Yeah. And <sighs> I would show up. I would help you with post, you know, posting yeah. on social media. But you do all the editing, the recording. You set all this crap up because there's no way I'm doing all this. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm putting the, the copy paper down, putting the table on top of that, putting the monitor on top of that. And I see how you love it. Like you just love, you love it. It's your, it's your passion. Yeah. And even though... I was here, I don't feel my heart was in it. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't understand. Like, I didn't understand how we can make a living doing this. You know? Yeah. And there were times where I could have did more, but I didn't have it in me to want to do more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I know like, um, you know, I'm busy with the business and everything else. And people that know us know that I am the social media guru, yeah. whatever the hell you want to call me. Yeah, like you're I, the, yeah, you're good at that. I'm good at marketing. I'm good at sales. Yeah. You know, and Facebook lives. And you don't really care much to do any of that. But you forced yourself to do it when I was not able to help help you. You know, and and I think what it was is that I just didn't understand yeah. what this could do, f you know, for us and for the people watching because we do this not just for us but for them as well, our listeners. Yeah. And so I started looking into it and I found this podcast and it's – or this group and it's a bunch of women that podcast. Yeah, it's cool. You know, and – most of the podcasts I listen to are men. They're men. And and what they're talking about, some I don't relate. And I see them and I'm like, mm, not into it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there that there was a disconnect. And once I started once I joined this group and I started connecting to the women in this group and I started to hear their point of view of what a podcast can do and everything and what it can lead to yeah. and how many people we can help. And it just clicked. Like yeah. I've been, I've been working. You have been, I have, and it You've feels good, it. but I enjoy it now before I didn't, it felt like a chore. I like this. this right? part, you like this like, part. I of, like, you, yes. like, you like to sit down and so talk part I of it. I just showed up. <laughs> I just, Hey, ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but the more I'm learning, the more I become interested in what's next. 
Yeah. It's funny because you'll, you know, like this week, you really started getting into it and you're researching and doing stuff and you're like, babe, you need to put the links. He's at work. You need, you need to put the links <laughs> in the show notes. And I'm like, I already, I've been doing that. <laughs> I've been doing that since like episode two, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, but I didn't understand like a all, lot of. All the things that you're finding out. Yeah. I've been found out. <laughs> yeah. You know, but there's a lot of stuff that you're learning that, yeah, that we got to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of great information. I just and don't know how. I don't know how. How? What? what? I. Where am I going to fit it in? Where? Um, that's why I, like, well, that's why I told you, like, I well, want to write yeah. a list of, like, no, we we'll have focused on, we've been focused on bringing guests on. It's time for us to be a guest. Yeah, we'll and now I'm learning how to do that. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to focus on. There's going nice. to be my top 10 and I'm going to start reaching out, you sure. know, so that we can go that route. But anyways, um I'm really excited about this. Yeah. <laughs> 2 years later. <laughs> yep. You know, I'm no, excited it's good. for I'm, I'm glad you're getting into it. Yeah. 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 You know what? Back back to the freaking uh vacation that we had. We are like the worst. Mm. The worst yes. travelers on the planet. Yes. Like whenever mm -hmm. we go on vacation, the first day is just spent on going and buying all the shit that we forgot to take with us and like figuring out what we're going to do, you know, because it's like, okay, grab this, grab that, get, who's not, get in the car, you get in yeah. the car. <laughs> oh shit, we need gas. And then, <laughs> hey, do you bring, uh, you're only wearing one shoe. What the fuck? You know, it's like, everything is, a. we show up. It, like no jacket we're missing uh, it's like no that's not true audrey didn't have gloves oh. audrey didn't have gloves audrey we had, had to gloves. go buy we had to go find gloves audrey had gloves yeah she, she had lost gloves. her gloves so i didn't want to buy her i was being anyway we're not very good stubborn at about it yeah and it's because too we had this vacation by the way you guys was a last minute thing it like, was like let's get out of here i told yeah i told miguel i'm like you know what we need to go do something with the kids yeah. And it was very last minute. I think I got the hotel the day before. Day. The yeah. night we got the yeah. hotel the night before. That's right. We did. You or know? two nights before. And my thing is I've always been spontaneous. Like I'm just that person. But it's hard to be spontaneous when you have a husband and kids because I packed all you guys up. Well, no, I packed some of your your You packed a lot up. of yeah, you packed you know all of our stuff. You packed the stuff that you knew that I needed. Yeah. And then I packed the last the last of the stuff. But the whole time, because we had the Joe Coy episode coming out, it we had clips that had to come mm -hmm. out. So while you're doing all that, like I was editing all night. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just what it is. It's it's part of it's it's part of the grind. Yeah. So while we were in Flagstaff, we we went to uh like I said, we went to the crater and the vault and the uh the ruins and all that. And there was one time we were sitting there hanging out. We're listening to the station. It was kinda like a not like it's kind of like an older like an easy listening one of the older stations like i don't know if we we just kind of put something on and this guy it's one of those like uh oh, what what are those shows the oldies shows the freaking art laveau freaking oldies oh yeah yeah, yeah. valentine shows that mm -hmm. that i had i took you to a couple of those um and there's a guy on there and the host is asking mm -hmm. the caller and he tells the caller he's like hey so uh how did you know that your wife was the one for you Oh, you remember that? And he's like, you're really going to talk about that. <laughs> and he's like, well, when my, uh, I think, uh, he went to go try to hold his her. girlfriend or, or the girl no. he was dating. He yeah. was trying to hold her hand at the time. It was the first, yeah. The first date. And she rejected him yeah, like, yeah. not so fast, buddy. <laughs> and he's like, I knew right in that moment <laughs> that she was going to be my wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what did I tell you? <laughs> And I asked Miguel, I'm like, hey. I was like, I know exactly what moment. <laughs> I was like, it was that one time that we were watching Titanic and I had, I was like, I, I, I try to pull that, that corny ass slick shit where you yawn and put your, uh, put your arm around. And then all of a sudden. His finger ended up in my mouth. No. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> You're stupid. this, this is it. This is the one I'm going to marry. <laughs> And that was it. <laughs> and that and that and was that it. That was it. Like yeah. seriously, I was that not was fucking it. around. <laughs> oh, You're really, it's freaking funny. Jeez. Oh, I had someone uh, reach out to me regarding a podcast, Babe. and so she does like this. Real, 
can I jump in real quick what? before we get into something else? Because this has to do still with the uh, with the vacation. It was it, it was something freaking hilarious that happened. So I don't know what's up with our kids. Like our kids. They well, I, Audrey's the one that kind of started it. She makes these noises. <laughs> I don't I don't know what the hell. I, I don't know like, what the noises are. It, it's just dumb I don't shit. know. I, th- I think like, they learn about ah, them. Or, or freaking just like some fucking I, and they I'm like, learn them what? on the games they play i'm like what is that what are you doing and i'm like i, I don't i don't know what does that mean i don't i don't get it but every once like this shit's annoying yeah so driving we, us fucking nuts right so the kids are upstairs in the hotel so we we have a hotel and it's sonia and i audrey joey and we have our nephew with us chris yes, yes. right so Audrey and Chris are on one bed yes. and then we, Sonia and I are standing up and they're laying down. It's late. And yeah. Sonia and I are like, we're going to kind of hang out together yeah. and let the kids go to sleep. And, um, we're standing up and we're eating some stuff <laughs> and we're making some noise. Like we're, we start, we're messing around. We're, I don't know if we had music on. Oh, I we put music on my phone. I think. Yeah, we may have had. I some think music I had some, We had some music. We we're hanging out, and then um, all of a sudden, Audrey says something like, yeah. <laughs> "But it wasn't just like, can you guys be quiet?" No. Or it was like, ugh, <laughs> <laughs> like she's whining, and we, we kind of noticed, yes. <laughs> and we're like, oh. Is this annoying you? Because she was trying to go to sleep. She was and trying we to go were to being obnoxious. So guess what happened? Right <laughs> after that, we start going. And fucking making all these things she's like oh my god and we're like oh not so funny is it right. and then and then all of a sudden so i look funny. at sonia and i hear sonia <laughs> fucking making cat noises and all this other shit oh we drove that we drove them fucking insane but that's we have to give them you know a taste of their own Hell medicine yeah. uh, it was fun we shit. dude we and we did not stop we kept no, that shit going yeah, for like yeah. 10 minutes they were fucking pissed <laughs> so hopefully we won't get any of that anymore yeah but yeah i forgot what i was gonna say you were talking about the podcast the women and the podcast the women's group um yeah i don't want to talk about that anymore (laughs) okay (laughs) no i told you that um someone had reached out to me and because we are you know a relationship podcast there you know there's yeah. two of us and we don't always talk about sex marriage you know what i'm saying but we yeah. do every once in a while i told her to watch episode 69 no. <laughs> but she asked me it's because she asked me she's like are you open with you know talking about sex and i'm like uh yeah <laughs> and uh and i'm like uh, our i told her we have a podcast and because she was looking for a guest, I'm like, we have a podcast called Opposites Track. And so just watch episode 69 and 42. 42 should have been 69. Um, yeah. <laughs> you fucking got loose on that one. So she, she's Open up like, the treasure chest. <laughs> she's like, how have you guys been able to, um, you know, keep the fire going in your relationship? And that we should, we could use an entire episode on (laughs) yeah but you know i just i told her like open communication yeah you know but most people are very uptight um, yeah you know uptight or maybe embarrassed by what they're into you know yeah and uh so yeah she asked if i would be interested in you know being a guest on her her podcast (laughs) i'll listen to it (laughs) you know i hear what's up (laughs) But right, I, already I, think, know I think what we should do from for now on is have certain topics that we're going to talk about. Like, OK, yeah, next we week that. we're going to talk about marriage. Well, we sex. can ask we can ask our, our audience uh, what what maybe something they want us to get into. Right. You guys can let us know. and We'll get into it. Yeah, for sure. So I think that would be cool. All right. There we go. Yeah. So um, we were also talking about like over the years when it comes to sending the kids off to school like we're very obviously it's called opposites attract podcast this is one of those opposites that we just kind of realized when we were sitting there talking Uh, but over the years as the kids go to school you know there's been times when you send them to school all the time and then there's been times when i'm sending them to school all the time right and uh and it's funny because we were talking about 
what we tell them mm -hmm. when they're going to school, right? Right. So, I mean, we, we both would go out there, give them a hug, give them a kiss, make sure they're getting on the bus, wave at them when they're leaving. Right. But before they get on the bus, I would grab Audrey and Joey and I'm like, hey, both of you, come here. And they're like, yeah. They're looking at me and I'm like, pay attention. They're like, okay. I'm like, if your teacher's talking, I need you to stop, look, and listen. You focus and pay attention. All right? They're like, yeah. Okay. All right. Do your best. Okay, good. And then get on the bus. I love you. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. And then when you, and then you start telling me, you started laughing. And then you're telling me what you tell them. Because I heard you and you sound like a drill sergeant, <laughs> you know? And I got the, like, the knife hand. I'm like, hey, <laughs> if your teacher's talking, you stop, look, and yes. listen. Yes. You know, and all I tell them is, hey, be kind. Like, be kind. And I have to say that even before I say anything, Joey's like, I know, be kind. I'm like, yes, if you see a kid and he's sad or he's not having a good day, what are you going to do? I'm going to go up to him and make him smile. Be kind. Yes. That's awesome. And every time we went to a um, parent-teacher conference, what do the teachers tell us? Yeah, they tell us that the kids are very, very well mannered, very kind. They're they're good kids. Yes, you know, and that's what's shitty important. students, but good kids. And no, that's, I'm just kidding. And and that's <laughs> what's important, you know, because I don't remember who it was, but someone had complimented us on that, um, and it wasn't a teacher. I think it was a parent. Yeah. You know, and they said that that's really good because today that's not the message that parents are giving their children. Yeah. You know, they're on them. I mean, we do talk to them. We want them to be, you know, good students. Yeah. But I want them to be good kids. Yeah. Good individuals. I, I, I'm nice more, individuals. I'm more concerned with them being good people. Yes. Because like I said, you, you don't need much to succeed you're gonna figure it all out on your own anyway like i was talking about to, to the, my friend yesterday about the youtube channel mm -hmm. the stuff that you that you need to learn to be successful you're gonna learn it and they don't teach you any of that shit in school they don't right you know and those the, the skills that you need to succeed you'll learn after school all the, the ones that you need in school are reading writing and basic math adding subtracting multiplying and dividing unless you want to be an engineer or something like that, then yes, you have to go to school. You mm -hmm. want to be a scientist or something, you have to go to school. But, well, it, did Elon Musk go to school for a rocket building? Didn't he just buy a bunch of books and read them? And when you look up the most successful individuals, a lot of them dropped out of college, didn't go to college. Yeah, crazy. You know, and that's why with the kids, like, I don't know, you know, do we not give them an option? You know, like you're going to college and that's it. No, you know, no. But didn't you tell me that your side of the like your mom's side of the family, like your cousins, there was no option. This like is, that's that was it. You're going yeah. to college. So and that's it. This is the thing is that. Well, this is a perfect example. So I have. My mom's side of the family and my dad's side of the family. Right. And yeah, it's a little bit different, but on my mom's side of the family. I have my cousins and all of them graduated college. And when I lived with them, when I was going to high school, I, I kind of, well, not, not then, but when I left, I kind of noticed that it was just different. It, it, it wasn't a question of if you were going to go to college. Right. That's the difference. It's like, where are you going to go to college? Because you're going to go to college. So is that it was right just an expectation. or wrong? Do you know what I'm saying? Because if we don't give, if we don't have those expectations, then they're going to be like, well, if I don't feel like going, I'm not going. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the thing at the same time is like, I don't feel like you have to have college. Right. 
Because if you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to do something else, you don't have to have college. I mean, it helps. And, and you know, another thing that I was talking, that, that I was thinking too, is that it, it kind of made me think with uh, when we had Joe Coy on, right? And he was talking about how he made it, he got on The, the Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. And right after The Tonight Show, he was back working at Nordstrom Rack selling shoes. Right. Right? And once he hit The Tonight Show, he could quit Nordstrom Rack and just focus on his comedy career. Um, but up until then, I mean, that's like 15 years of working, you know, jobs just to get by so that you can focus on your dream. Right. We've been pretty fortunate where I don't have a job like where I'm just trying to get by. Right. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit like it takes a lot of the pressure off. But at the same time, it could be a hindrance because it makes you comfortable. Like I'm getting a paycheck. You know, if the podcast doesn't take off and doesn't turn into something, no big deal. Like I'm not going to starve. I'll be fine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I don't need this to survive, but I do want it, you know? So I don't know. I don't know where, uh, I lost my train of thought. (laughs) (laughs) I was asking you. (laughs) What the hell were you asking me? I was asking you about, you know, should we have those expectations for the kids? Yeah. Like, hey, you're well, going to college. Yeah. And so that's what, it. I was, what I was saying about the kids is that if they don't go to school and they want to chase a dream, like it could put a lot more pressure on them because they're going to be working some bullshit job trying to build their dream and they're going to be struggling and fucking hungry all the time. But are they? But at the same time, going to- <laughs> but at the same time, if you're fucking struggling and hungry all the time. Mm hmm then that might push you to work on your dream. Yeah. Or it could push you to get a job. Yeah, it It just all depends on, yep. It it depends on how determined you are. Because like I said, if you have a good job, the comfort of having a good job could also make you not go after your dreams because you're comfortable where you're at. Right. It's just crazy. When I think back of how I became an entrepreneur. That was what in 2006. Yeah. I was working at a law firm doing very well, right? Getting paid very well. And there was no fear whatsoever when, when, because what happened was the attorney gave me um, an ultimatum because he found out that I opened up an LLC, Sapiens affordable legal services. He thought I was going, I was taking his clients or whatever it may have been. And he asked me to choose, you know, between legal shield and, and the job. Yeah. And you, you got some ovaries on dude, you. You I fucking got some, quit, huh? I got some ovaries. <laughs> 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 like, seriously. And I look back and I'm like, I had a house. And yeah. I was and sing- you quit. I was single. And I That's was crazy. like, wait, was I? S- yeah, yeah. 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 You know, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know who, I mean, damn, (laughs) you know, and I just hope that, you know, our kids have our um, balls and ovaries. (laughs) We'll see. You know, you know what? I I think maybe once they get older or I don't know that maybe it'll come out or once they figure out what they want to do, maybe they'll be a little bit more passionate about it once they figure it out. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. Who knows what the future? But uh, has yeah, in so store. we're working on on our store. Speaking of store, we had we're working on the store, which is gonna be on Amazon. Um, I got some designs that I'm working on that we're gonna be putting up. Uh, but yeah, you, you'll probably just go right to Amazon and search "Opposites Attract" podcast, and you'll start seeing our our merch on there. Yeah, I'm excited. And uh, we were gonna set up the store somewhere else, but I figured. Amazon is just something that everybody knows, everybody's comfortable with, and, yeah. you know, we can do it there. Yeah, so, and we can see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, yep. You know, but, so, so today, um, I decided, my nephews, my nephews have been on my heart a lot lately. Yeah. And I have a very close relationship with my niece, and, f- um, so, my, well, my sister passed in yeah. 2007 and Miguel and I took 
took in um, my niece and my two nephews for a few years and yeah. went from being the cool aunt and uncle to the parent figure, which was not fun for me at all. But I grew this close bond with with my my niece well, and yeah. at my nep- my nephews. We, we had a relationship, but once they went back with their dad, that relationship kind of went to the side. But my not, niece not really and to I, the side. It's just there wasn't as much communication or contact right. as there was before. Right. Yeah. And once they moved out, I figured, you know, their dad, you know, they're with their dad. And, you know, we stayed in contact, but he was mainly in their life. And I just felt that I needed to reach out to them. And so I reached out to uh, my nephew today, went to go visit him, Randy, and it felt so good because I don't know the 24-year-old Randy. Yeah. And Randy doesn't know his 43, no, 44-year-old <laughs> Thea. <laughs> yeah. You know, he d- and so we had such a great conversation. And I remember telling him when he was little, that he was here to do something big. And I feel that in my heart, like a hundred percent, like he is here. He's gone through so many challenges. He, he has um, a dis- disability. It's prune belly syndrome and he doesn't have, you know, stomach muscles and he has just a few challenges, but he's always been this positive. Yeah. He's never let it, let life, it like hold full him of back. joy. Always. Even when he was a baby, you know, when and he was never embarrassed up never. by it or like, but that he never was all let it my hold sister. Back. Yeah. That was all my sister. Cause I remember when I would go visit them, she would tell him, Hey, show your, you know, your Thea, your new scar. And she made it cool. And he would yeah. come up to us and he was like two years old and pull up his shirt and show us his scar. And his, you know, he used to have a trait mm-hmm. as well. And so he was always very open. And now he's a young adult and he is still the same way. Yeah. Like he has every excuse to not be happy. You know? Yeah. And I asked him, do you remember that, you know, me telling you that you were here to do something, you know, something to, to make a difference? And he said, yes, I remember. And he smiled. Yeah. And we just started talking about the future. And I ask him, you know, what does he do? You know, just to during pass the, time. He, pass the time. And he's like, I still write my poetry. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I've been writing it s- since middle school. I'm like, what? And he's like, yes. He showed me all his poetry. And I read, I used to read it. And he, they were good. But let me tell you, today. No. Yeah. He's gotten so good. And I told him, I'm like, Randy, you have a poetry book in your hand because he has everything saved in his phone. I'm like, you have a poetry book in your hand. And he looked at me and he smiled and he's like, one of my friends told me, told me that. And I'm like, hey, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's put it out. You know? Yeah. And so I asked him to share one of his poems with me and I wanted to um read it to you all. Do you want to read it? But first, for those of you guys that are listening to the podcast, make sure you guys go to opposite to track podcast.com. <laughs> share it with the people that you know. When you go there, you'll be able to watch the podcast. You can listen to it. Uh you'll also see the support the show tab at the top if you're on the computer. On the phone, if you hit the menu button, you'll see the support the show tab. That'll take you to our Amazon link. And anything that you purchase through that link doesn't cost you anything more, but it helps out the show. We get a couple pennies whenever you buy something. And it's just like using regular Amazon. You just click on there and you can just shop like you normally do. And uh, you'll also see another link to Trust Inc. And Trust Inc. is? We are a nationwide mobile notary agency. We do a lot of work with uh, title companies and law firms. Uh, lately, we've been super, super busy with refinances. Yeah. Um and in some purchases it's crazy here in arizona the real yeah. estate is just insane yeah, so if you are looking to buy sell or refi you can request trusting to be your um agency to help you sign your loan docs 
Yep. And if you want to go to Trust Inc. directly, you can go to trustinkusa.com. We're also affiliates with Libsyn, which is who hosts and puts out our podcast. They also put out some of the biggest podcasts in the world. And if you guys have thought about starting a podcast, if you have a hobby that you want to talk about and you want to give it a shot, you can use promo code OAP for Opposite to Track Podcast. And you'll get the rest of whatever month you sign up in for free and you'll get the next month for free. So if this is something that you're thinking about, I probably wouldn't sign up right now, right this second. I would wait till maybe March 2nd and then sign up. That way you get the rest of March and then you'll get April for free also. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, promo code OAP. And you memorized all that. You're so good. <laughs> well, I also have it written down in my notes over here. <laughs> That helps me out. You know what? Another thing. For those of you guys out there that would like to call us and leave us a message, if you want to let us know how we did on the last episode or your favorite moment of the episode, we're coming up on two years in a couple months. Yeah, that's not freaking crazy. Mm-hmm. When you look back that it's been two years already. Yeah, because it, it, it doesn't recording. feel that way. So if you guys would like to give us a call, send us a text, leave us a message, and we'll play it on the show. You can call us at 480-912-5128. And don't forget to stop by our website and download our free resource list. So all you have to do is punch in www.oppositesattractpod.com and it will come right up and you just put your name, email, and the resource list will be emailed to you right then and there. It'll, it'll actually, it'll, when you put your name in your email and you hit enter, It'll take you to another page where you can download the resource list. Oh, okay. And it also has the uh, the country songs on there. Oh, there so. you go. There you go. So the back to the poem. <laughs> All right. Did you want me to read it? So it's called, I can read it oh, unless yeah, go you want to read it. Um, it's called Vices and Virtues. So it says, just live your life without a single regret. You will painfully learn to forgive but never forget. Each day that passes, we're closer to dying. You say you feel alive, but you're really trying. What lessons will you leave? What lessons will you leave? Put yourself in the place of me. Is it hope you are trying to receive? You believe you are alive because you find yourself merely able to breathe. Look deeply inside. What do you wish to achieve? Leave your name as your legacy. Preserve. Preserve every moment, for my life can be over so abruptly. Grab it as your own and challenge it constantly. It's vicious and it isn't afraid to show the truth ruthlessly. Little time for redemption. Live to the fullest with no interruption. Enjoy every day. Don't listen to what others have to say, wasting seconds with every syllable. Knowing what's best for me, because I find I'm fully capable. Don't let your virtues become your vices. Don't let your virtues become your vices. How will you leave your legacy? How will you remember me? That's cool. Right? Yeah. And he has poem after poem after poem. And I told him, I said, you know, I said, maybe this is it. Maybe this is how you're going to reach, you know, those that need help that are, you know, yeah. Maybe going through some things or maybe they can relate to, to your words, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's good. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll talk to him and see what he wants to do with that. But, um, yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. So he's uh, excited about it. Yeah. I'm glad. No, he's got good stuff. And, and I, I remember when he was living with us, like he, he was writing back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yep. So uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, for those of you that are watching the podcast on Facebook and YouTube. Are you going to start talking shit? (laughs) A couple weeks ago. Jerk off. I get a charge or an email of a charge. uh, And uh, all of a sudden, if you guys are watching, you can tell that we got these little matching necklaces on. And uh, I don't know if you want to. You want to read what these necklaces do? No, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. So Sonia orders these magic <laughs> necklaces <You're stupid>. that, <laughs> that apparently I, I told her, I was like, don't, don't tell me what they do. I'm just going to put them on. So I put it on and man, you know, ever since I put it on, I just feel like, you know, let me see. Nah, 
okay, hold up. Okay, so I feel we, incredible. We've been going to sleep late and yes. waking up early. Yeah. Last night I had s- solid. You had the sleep. best sleep ever. I, yes. <sighs> yes. Okay, and so what it's called, okay, it's a vibe energy pendant, okay? It protects you from EMF and cell phone radiation. So this is the vibe energy pendant. It's compromised of 27 natural earth minerals and over 6,000 negative ions. Infused together using nanotechnology, our experiments show a two to four foot... Feet, sorry, minimum radius of protection against EMF, meaning your vital organs are protected and you can eliminate any fears of cell phone radiation or radiation caused by cities, workplace environment, and electronic vices. Now, listen, if you look up this pendant, they're going to be our sponsors. (laughs) They're going to be one of our sponsors. (laughs) They've stopped. And you read... (laughs) the reviews like Man. there are hundreds of reviews on this necklace on yeah. this pendant so sonia's turning into this fucking huge hippie like <laughs> oh my so first she orders this this magic necklace right and then she's listening to this podcast where they're talking about all this stuff and she's bulletproof radio oh my god so the, the we're hanging out and we're going to get something to drink, right? And we'll have some crystal light because, you know, the sugar and all that. And then... Because uh, it's like, sugar free. Yeah. That's and, why. And she's like, oh, I need, we to, don't I, drink need to, soda. I need to see what's in that. And I already know, like in my head, I already know where she's going. Because for those of you that don't know, everything that's diet, that is sweet, that does not have sugar in it, most likely will have aspartame. That's how they sweeten it, which is like the the zero sugar energy drinks, um, the crystal light, the diet sodas, all that. It all has aspartame in it. That's how they sweeten it. And I already knew that that, you know, I, I've heard that that shit's bad stevia. for you. But <laughs> Sonia goes and gets these necklaces. She's listening to this podcast. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going to get something to drink. And she's like, what's in that? I'm like, it's aspartame. And she's like, <gasps> Oh my God, <laughs> that stuff's so bad for you. What are you going to, you going to drink that? And we got like fucking four boxes of crystal light in the pantry. And I'm like, Hey, relax. You got your fucking force field on. You got your magic <laughs> necklace. That ain't shit going to happen. If you got that thing on, we're fucking protected right now. Listen, four, listen. four foot force field. Listen, Linda. <sighs> ain't shit happening. As long as I got listen. this on me. So this podcast, it's not a bunch of, you know, whatever the <laughs> hell you, you <laughs> woohoo shit or whatever. You know, he has ind- scientists that come on. Tell me. Tell me about Specialists. This tell me. That come on. And when you think about it, it makes so much sense. Like food is, you know, food is medicine. It food is. is there to... It is medicine. <laughs> Provide nutrition. Nutrition. Yes. Yes. And when you look to see what you're putting in your body, that's why we are all falling apart. That's right. Babe, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, true. Yeah. I mean, sugar Sugar's horrible. is killing us. Yeah. You know, when it comes to cancer and just all of that, the more I educate myself with this stuff, I'm like, and he, he served... He served his crystal light and he's like, you're really not drinking none. I'm like, no, I'm good. Like, I, I'm not doing it. All right. You this know? is this is the thing. Like, uh, the way I see it, if you look at food and it's like, hey, if it comes from nature and if it's in its natural form, then just fucking eat it. Crystal You'll be all light right. does not. No, I know. I know that. But I'm just saying, like, health is not that complicated. Right. It's not that fucking complicated. Huh. Like, get... Get real food and yeah. eat it. Grass, grass fed now, meat. Yes, I understand. Yes. But we, we've talked about this before. When we were trying to get healthy. Not- Look, we went from getting fucking chips and spaghetti and all this other bullshit that we would eat all the time to, I, like, I remember, like, you were like, well, let's go to Whole Foods and let's get some organic this and organic that. I'm like, hey, how about we just get fucking regular ass vegetables first? 
Let's see if we eat those. Because when we go buy vegetables, what happens is they would end up in the fridge and then we'll eat a bunch of bullshit and the vegetables go bad and everything goes bad. That was no, last, that was no, that's last year. No, when we first started. That's that they oh, kept okay. happening, yeah. right? And I was like, no, we, we're not going to buy the organic everything. Maybe we can work our way up to the organic stuff, but I'm not going to just jump off the deep end and be like fucking organic, grass-fed fucking everything. Because then not only are you throwing away a bunch of shit that you haven't ate, but you're paying outrageous prices for this stuff because the, the good stuff costs more money. Yeah, and the medical bills that will be Yeah, coming. no, I get it. Okay. What I'm saying is that it doesn't do you any good if it just goes bad in the fridge. So I would rather start with regular fruits and vegetables and meat and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But we're past that. I understand, but not everybody oh. that's listening is past okay. that. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying where we where we started, we would mm -hmm. buy all the stuff and it would all go bad. And then we would throw it all away and then just keep eating bullshit. So just get some stuff. It doesn't have to be organic. Doesn't just get even if it's just regular broccoli, regular whatever, just fruits, vegetables, meat, and just start working on that. And then little by little, you can start, you know, get into the the organic stuff, the freaking kombu kombuchas and all the other fucking... Sonia can tell you about all that stuff, too. <laughs> well, it's good for you. It is. It is. Yeah. Good. Why are you talking shit? <laughs> you and your magic necklace. <sighs> um, vibrator. <laughs> I was going to hit the vibrator. I was on the wrong on on page. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so. I'm getting, now I'm getting acupuncture. I'm getting. You're uh, doing all of it. Cupping. Yeah. Got my magic necklace on. Drinking lots of water. No, I'm like really serious. I'm just, I'm, I'm done. And it's just the way now I see things differently before, it, you know, it was like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, maybe it has to do with me being a year older. Yeah. But what's next? I think that. What's the next magic Even thing? the kids. Like I was talking to Adriana about how important it is to to eat healthy because she has celiac. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. hey, have you been taking your vitamins? And I had that conversation with her, you know, about all the pesticides that are being sprayed on our our fruits and our vegetables I think that's and the what, steroids that are being pumped into I was, our... I, I think I was telling you that aspartame, I think that's what it was originally, it was a pesticide. I don't... Yeah. I, 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 he, may, I may be completely fucking wrong. I might be making shit up, but I, I, I might have heard that somewhere. Yeah. Anyways, I'm just <laughs> but like... But if you guys if start repeating it and looking like idiots, <laughs> don't, don't blame me. I'm like, if this stuff is not good for you, you should not be putting it into your body. Yeah. You know, and the yeah. aches and pains and all the inflammation that's going on within the body it's caused by what you put in your body yeah you know what's next so what's the next thing our next conversation like i'm gonna look into this so i don't sound like a you know no what are we what what's the next what are we getting next what do you mean baby what's the the next uh healing well, thing. I'm going to a women's getting, encounter this weekend with my sister and i am so stoked we're leaving tomorrow or is tomorrow friday Yay! So we're leaving. I'm leaving with my uh, sister Ruby. We're driving up together to a women's encounter in uh, Payson. We're going to be staying in a cabin in the woods. That'll be and fun. I just can't wait to go hug a tree and lay in some grass and spend some quality time with some great, great women. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, That'll I'll get cool. all my, you know, meditation. That's the next thing. Meditation. I want us all, because I do, but I don't think you do. I mean, I know you don't, you know, but that's also good for the kids. Yeah. You know, just teaching them how to quiet the mind and yeah. just be more present, you know, because Adriana, the, when it comes to memory, just like me, when you're multi, before I used to take pride in that. Remember? Yeah. That I would multitask and all the things that I could do at once. And then you ask me a question about a conversation and I'm like, what? And you can't remember what you did. What? Was I doing that? Did I finish that? You know? Yeah. And so, um, and that's the thing that keto helped me with. Just staying sharp. Like, I've just never. Being, yeah. Yeah. You told me you don't feel the I difference at all. Like if I'm tired, I could be on keto. If I'm tired, I'm tired. 
yeah. I mean, keto is not going to stop you from being no, tired. No, but, but people are like, oh, well, you know, it keeps your mental clarity. You're like mentally sharper and all this. I'm like, that's, I don't know. Okay. So normally at this time when we're recording a podcast, how is my energy? Okay. It's low, I guess. How is it right now? Oh my God. <laughs> no, You're but serious. Yeah. Come on, you know we went to sleep late last night. Yeah, we and I woke up when you woke up, and you woke up what at five? I may have woke up at five fifteen. Yeah, but I woke up when you woke up. This week has been insane, just because of the last podcast with Joe Coy. Like we're trying to take advantage of everything that's been happening. We're posting. Uh, You know, we're also working on the store, working on all these different things, and it's and it's like every night. Like I wake up in the morning, and (laughs) and now I'm going into work again. And, uh, on usually on average, like I don't actually sit down and talk to Sonia until what? Nine, (laughs) nine 30, especially because you're not here. Yeah. Dude, last night, last night it was like almost 11 and both of us were still working. Yeah. Like today I came home. It was like dinner. It was crazy, crazy. And I said, Hey. I'll talk to you on the podcast. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what I, I told no. you. I came home. I came home from work and immediately like started working on on the video. Yeah. But then you were uh, on appointments, so I had to start making dinner so and, that you yeah. could finish dinner. Right. So that I could finish the videos. Yes. And then you could post, and then I had to set up the lights so that we could yes. record. Th- this is the thing. So here's the answer. Good. Okay. Why we have such a good marriage? Because people ask that. What makes it work? You guys are always saying that you're busy. You have crazy lives. And when are you going to enjoy life? You know, like, I get that. Like, because we are busy. But it's like, we enjoy what we do. And we're, we are together a lot. You know, we, we communicate all the time. You know, we're on the phone when we're not together. You know, when you're on lunch, like we have a good relationship. And what makes it work is that we work together to make our dreams come true. Like when I'm not here to make dinner, you are. Yeah. And when you got something to do, I make. Today today was a perfect example of that. I mean, I I, I started started dinner and then got to work on the videos. You came in, picked up the rest of dinner, served it. And when it was ready, I got up off the computer. We sat down. We as ate a real family, quick. we ate together. And then I we went talked. back. Yeah, yep, we, we, we talked for out. a little bit. And I went back to the computer, mm-hmm. kept working on the video. You cleaned up the kitchen. Yep. And then while you're cleaning up the kitchen, I'm setting up the podcast yes. stuff. Yeah. You know, so that's just when when something has to be done, we just it doesn't matter who has to do it. We It, it has to we get, get done. it done. We got to get it done. And, that's and the what thing ama- is, we want to hang out with each other. Right. So. I don't want to like leave shit for you to have to do if I could do it, because if I can do it and I'm not doing anything, then later we can hang out. If not, then you're going to have to do it or I'm going to have to do it. Right. You know? And I think that that is a topic that we need to talk more about, you know, regarding our marriage and how we make it work. And yeah, we are busy, but we do spend quality time together. Like we sit down, we have dinner yeah. together. We have time to talk to the kids and talk to them about what it is that, that we are doing. And if there's a sacrifice that needs to be had, like I had talked to the kids like, Hey, it's going to be busy. I said, but I don't know what it was about. But once we reach this, like we'll take you to Disneyland. There was yeah. something, you know, and it's just getting them on on board so that the mommy guilt doesn't kick in with me when you and I are running because we have a goal that we need to accomplish, you know, and if we're doing this together, I mean, and we got each other's back and we're not at each other's throats. Yeah. Which we're not, but not hardly ever. I mean, every once in a while, but the thing is Like people may look and be like, you guys are so busy. Like you're not even enjoying yourselves because you're just going from this to that, to this, to that, to this, to that. But the thing is that I also don't want to, like I have a job. I have a good job, but it's not something, I don't want to be doing this for my entire life. Yeah. You don't want to be having a job for your entire life. And Yes. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but I got options, right? Right. I have options to do other things. Yeah. And if you have a dream that you want to, 
achieve, then you have to do what you have to do now. Eventually, you can grow it to the point because if, if all we do is podcast, then I have a crap load more time. I don't know. We're going to have Babe, a merch no, store. There, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. I mean, maybe maybe we start recording more often or we start. Right. But yes, but even still. It's different 40, because it's yours. It does, it, so you're going to enjoy it. It is different. And yeah, you're not working for somebody else. It's not somebody else telling you to do things. And then sometimes you're like, that doesn't even make sense. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I got to do it anyway because I need a paycheck. If this is my thing, I'm doing things that make sense. And I know why these things need to get done. It's not right. like some just arbitrary reason to do stuff, you know, yeah. and it's mine. So I want to do it. Yeah. You know, I can see where ch the challenge can come in for a married couple. Um, if one is more, if one's an entrepreneur and the other one's not. That would, that would be harder. You know, I it, can see where the conflict can come in, especially if they're not supportive of what the other person is doing what i found you know one thing that i've learned like with legal shield and everything you see that sometimes like when you a would lot. you, you I, I know you've seen this before where you run into a couple where one of them is an entrepreneur yes. and the other one's got like more of the employee mindset yes. and they're like no 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 like and and the other yep. one's like yeah i want to do it i want to do it and the other was like no 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 you're not <sighs> i you can't know? imagine being in that relationship because that would but i understand hurt. i understand like mm -hmm. the 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 job it has that sense of security because you got a paycheck that's coming in every single week. Right. The entrepreneur, you got to figure out how you're going to make money. But then at the same time, the entrepreneur is in control. Like if you want more money, you can work. You can work more. You can figure out some things. You can, you know, design some new shirts. You can right. put out new content. You can do more things to make more money. Right. If you have a job, they could be like, right. you're done. But you have to have that self-discipline. Yes. Right? Yes. You have yes. to have that self-discipline. Because if what, not, you're going to drown. That's what a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs that don't make money, they, you know, they're an entrepreneur, quote unquote, <laughs> entrepreneur because they don't have a boss, but they also have no money. Right. You know, so you got to you got to have that discipline so you can make yeah. some money. You got to, you know, treat your business like a job. And uh, speaking of that, before we we get out of here, um. Yeah, there's uh there's something that I want to talk about, and uh, it's there there's some things that have been happening with my family, and I just wanted to mention it here. Um, so when we were on vacation on Sunday, the last episode came out on uh, on Sunday, right? And the day that the Joe Coy episode came out, that morning I was woken up by phone calls and by a text about my grandmother passing away. And, uh, you know, on a day that's supposed to be like the biggest day of the, uh, you know, of our podcast and like, this is what I want to do. And I'm super excited. And it's like, you know, we have a, a celebrity comedian, our favorite comedian on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. And, you know, we had pre-recorded it. So we were excited the whole like the days yes. leading up to the release of the episode we're like right. it's about to happen it's about yes. to happen the night before we're like fuck it's going down right yes mm. well i can tell you that last sunday will be a day that i'll never forget you know for many reasons for one for the podcast that that we put out but also the passing of my grandmother and um she was a uh, i mean you guys out there you have grandmothers my grandmother, she, she was a she special woman. She was an amazing woman. lady. Strong. I yeah. mean, just unbelievable. She lived, she was 91. Yeah. And she lived a full life. Yeah. And I remember when I first met her, she had such this strong presence. She's <laughs> no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I knew like, okay, she likes me, like, I'm in. If she likes you, you're Hell, in. Yeah. yeah. And if she does it, oh, <laughs> it's shit. It's going to be trouble. <laughs> Oh, you know, man. and everyone that knew her knew that about her. Yeah. But she had to be strong in order to do the things that, that she did. You know, I mean, she helped to raise you. She was like, yeah. you know, a, a mom to you. She was. And like, I, like I've said on this podcast before, um, growing up, I grew up with my dad for the most part. And even though I grew up with my dad, in my memories, I have more memories being at my grandmother and with my grandmother 
than I do at my own house. Like yeah. when I look back, I remember being there more than I was at my own house. So that was my house. Right. I mean, it was every day I would get out of school and go to my grandfather's job and he would drive me back to my grandmother's apartment every day. And sometimes it was me and my brothers and sisters. Now, between my brothers and sisters, there, there's quite a uh, age gap. So I was I was the uh, the only child for my dad. Uh, and then I think my my brother's like nine years later. So by that time, I was already a little bit older. And um, those those years leading up, like I was just with my grandmother all the time. And yeah. I've talked about on this podcast, you know, something that I do take pride in is like when when shit needs to get done, I, you know, I'll knock it out. And the work ethic, the hard work. Mm -hmm. And I saw that growing up. I mean, I've mentioned yeah. it here. Like we, my grandfather worked, my grandmother worked. We would get home from work and then we would leave to work again at night to clean offices in New York City, in Manhattan. Those giant skyscrapers, the office buildings, we would have certain floors. And this is when I was a little kid. I, I must have been, you know, nine, 10 years old. And I would go and I would grab, like, pick up the trash and all the different cubicles and the offices and throw the trash out, dust everything. And there was times that we didn't have enough time to get all the work done. So we would sleep in the office building with our jackets. Like we would just lay down on the floor wow. in an off. Like if people showed up for work, they would have caught us sleeping in the lobby. So we would wake up early in the morning and finish cleaning and leave. But we would fall asleep because we were, I mean, we would lay down and sleep there because we were tired and we were too tired to go back home and come back the next day. So we would just right. sleep there. Yeah. Um, she helped my dad with the parties that I had talked about. She would work the door. What? Yeah. You she, never my told grandma, me that. My grandmother worked the door. What? You know, she would, and, and not only that, but for the people, like I got a lot of calls from my friends, my friends in my neighborhood, in the building that I, that, that she lived in, that I grew up in. And for my friends that lived in that building, they know, like she was the grandmother kind of like for that building. When my friends would come over, they called her abuelita. She was abuelita for everybody. Mm -hmm. Dude, I, and, and I'm not talking about my Hispanic friends. I'm talking about like my black friends, my Asian friends. They would call her abuelita. She was abuelita for everybody. Mm. And she wasn't uh, shy to voice her opinions either to them. <laughs> right? Like she treated them the way she treated you. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. She wasn't soft with them just because they were your friend. <laughs> like no. she, she would tell them what's up. No. You know, and what did Audrey say the other day? <laughs> yeah. So after we found out what happened, Audrey, uh, she's like, was Abuelita, was she a veteran? And I start laughing because she, she was born in Ecuador and she came here and I'm like, no, she wasn't a veteran. And Audrey's like, I think she would have been a good one. And I was like, I think you're right. I think she would have been a good one. But she was, she was like my mom. I learned a lot from her. I spent so much time with her. I in elementary school, I would get into fights, and she would she would make me I, fight. She <laughs> would make me fight. She would break. Me. She would break up fights. She would make. She's like, hey, if that kid's picking on you, then you're gonna go kick his ass. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. And you're gonna kick his ass, and I'm gonna watch you kick his ass. This is my grandmother. I know that's just insane. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I love her to death. I'm gonna. I'm gonna miss her. A lot of people are going to miss her. Yeah. I love you, Abuelita Sara. And with that, I don't know if I'll, I'm not going to put any music on this. I'm just going to leave it. And if you guys are watching this on Facebook and YouTube, I'll put, I'll put something up. But uh, to my family that may listen to this, it's also, we have my aunt who's uh, in the hospital right now and she's, she has COVID. She's recovering. Um, she's still fighting. Um, little by little, she's getting better, but we're not out of it yet. 
um, and she's still fighting. And her, my cousins, her kids, growing up, they were, I, I was the oldest child. So whenever I got a chance to hang out with them, they were like the closest thing I had to like a big brother and sister. So I used to love whenever, like I have memories of hanging out with them. Like they were the ones that I looked up to. They were a few years older than me, you know? So they were, they were the cool ones. Mm -hmm. And, um, my aunt's going to get better and then, uh, you know, we'll figure out what we're going to do. So, but, um, yeah. So we love you to my family. I love you. We'll, we'll see each other soon. And with that, we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.